بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. The Prophet وسلم, said that a man is going to walk through the door right now, he will be a man of Jannah. So all the Sahaba, they were waiting, who's going to walk through the door? And somebody walked in, and he was a man from the Ansar. And this man was Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas. He said, the man will walk through this door, he's going to be a man of Jannah. He walked through the door, and he came, and water was dripping from his beard, and he was holding his sandals in his left hand, and he came and sat. So the Sahabi, I think it was Anas ibn Malik or one of the companions, he said, I wanted to know what action this person has by which he has become a man of paradise. Three days in a row the Prophet said that, that the next person who walks in through this door, he is a man of paradise. And then the third day, the man who walks in from this door, he was going to be a man from paradise. So this young Sahabi, he says, I had to find out what action he's doing, what he does, which has made him qualified to be a man of paradise in this life, before his death. Imagine, he's not even dead yet. He's already being promised Jannah. So he said, you know, I, uh, I'm just having some problems at the house. You know, I had to argue. Can I stay at your house if you don't mind? He said, oh, of course, you can stay at my house. You have, if you have some problem, no problem. You can stay at my house. You're my guest. You're my guest. Three days. Three days the guest has a haq, has a right upon you. So this young Sahabi, he was watching him for three days, seeing what actions he has, what good deeds. He was watching him. He said, I didn't notice him to do anything any differently. He's doing everything normal just like everybody else. And I'm like, you know, what's so special about him? I have more good deeds than him. And he said the third day, and the only difference I noticed is that, you know, when he would turn, and he would wake up in his sleep and he would turn around, he'd just remember Allah Ta'ala. He would remember the name of Allah if he's turning on his right or left. He wasn't doing anything special. I said, what's so special about this guy? So in the end of the three days, he said, okay, I'll see you inshallah. هذا فراق بيني وبينك. This is our separation. So then he was, he was walking away. He says, oh, I just can't hold, I can't hold it in anymore. I have to tell you. You know, I really wasn't just staying at your house for no reason. The reason why I was staying at your house was because the Prophet told me, he told all of us, that the next man who walks through this door is going to be a man of paradise. Three days in a row you walk through the door. And I wanted to stay with you for three days to see what actions you are doing so that I can emulate you, so I can also be qualified to be a man of paradise. He said, did the Prophet really say that? And tears swelled up in his eyes. Imagine, he didn't even know. And he got choked up. And then he said, ah, what you saw, that's all I have. I don't have anything else. What you saw, I don't, I'm, I don't have anything special. I'm not a special person. So then he started to walk away. He said, oh, come back. Now I remember. There is something that I have. And I do that every single day. And no one knows about it but me and my Lord. This is the point here. Brothers and sisters, to have such an action, to do such a deed that is only between you and Allah. That's it. Oh Allah, I have this. It is just between me and you. No one else knows about this. He says, there is one thing that I have. And what is that? He said, before I go to sleep, if I have any ill will in my heart towards anybody, if I have any grudge in my heart against anybody, I clean my heart. And I said, oh Allah, I have forgiven anybody and everybody that has wronged me. Allah Akbar. The Sahabi said, this is what you have that we do not have. This is what has made you attain the gardens of paradise and we have become deprived is that you do not hold anything in your heart against nobody. Some people just like to hold a grudge in their heart. Brothers and sisters, don't hold a grudge in your heart for no reason, because Allah will ask you about that. You know, there's certain sins, it's like enjoyable to do. And there's certain sins, there's no enjoyment in it. You know what I mean? There's certain sins, it doesn't have any enjoyment in. When you hold a grudge and you hate somebody for no reason in your heart, then you know what? It's just a stupid sin. Because there's no benefit in it. It's just burning you inside. For no reason. For no reason. So 
don't allow that to be in your heart. Keep your heart clean. And say, oh Allah Ta'ala, you've given whatever you've given to whoever you want. That's not in my hands. And oh Allah Ta'ala, you've given those that you've given status to, you've given status to them. That's not my problem. You've given it to them. You are the, you are the possessor of the treasure of the heavens and the earth. And you've given it to who you want. And if somebody wronged me, that wasn't my destiny. Whatever was, was coming to me, is gonna come to me. And whatever, whatever missed me, was never gonna come to me. So why should I blame anybody or have a grudge in my heart? What has missed me, would have never come to me. And what came to me, would have never missed me. مَا أَخْطَأَكَ لَمْ يَكُلْ لِيُصِيبَكَ وَمَا أَصَابَكَ لَمْ يَكُلْ لِيُخْطِئَكَ That which reaches you, will never have missed you. And that which missed you, would never have reached you. So don't worry about it. Don't hold a grudge in your heart. And don't put the blame on people.